There are a couple of different ways to solve this problem. Uh, the biggest way, one of the ways to do it depends on how comfortable you are multiplying in your head. So I'm going to show you the way, it's kind of a long way, but if you're not comfortable multiplying in your head, it's the way you want to do it. So the letter in front, the number in front of the y squared, I call that letter A, and in front of the y is B, and uh, the number by itself is C. So what I do, step one, is I make an X, and I put A times C in the top of the X, and I put B in the bottom of the X. So A times C is seven times six, so that's 42. And then the B goes in the bottom, and it's a negative, so it's negative 17. Then I come over here and I write all the multi things I can multiply together to give me 42. So that's 1 times 42, or it's 2 times 21, or it's, let's see, 3 goes into it. So, if you again, if you aren't that good at multiplying, you just put 42 in your calculator, you divide it by 2, you get 21. You divide it by 3, you get 14. 4 doesn't go into it. If you divide it by 4, you don't get a whole number. Neither does 5. 6 goes into it. It's 6 times 7, and then it repeats. Then I look at the pa these pairs of numbers, and I say, what two pairs are going to add to give me b? So I want to add together to get negative 17, and I want to multiply together to get 42. So that's the goal when we set up the x is uh, filling in the two sides of the x to get 42. And so the two numbers that work for that are 3 and 14. So it's going to be, since it's a negative here and we're adding them, it's going to be a negative 3 and a negative 14. And what this does is it splits this three-term polynomial into a four-term polynomial. And so then I can write, rewrite the problem Instead of a seven, negative 17 in front of my y, I'm going to split that into a negative 3y and a negative 14y. So I'm going to turn it into a four-term polynomial. So this is 7y squared. Sorry, these pens are hard to write with. Minus 3y minus 14y plus 6. So now the goal is to factor by grouping. So uh, I'm going to group the first two things together. Um, but before I group the second two terms, I have to remember that this is a minus sign. So this is plus a negative. So these two get grouped together, and these two get grouped together. But I want that minus sign to stay in with the y. And then I come through here and I say, what are my, what's my common factor between 7y squared and 3y? And it's y. So then I divide y from each term, and I get 7y minus 3. Now, in order for this to be factoring by grouping, the sec I need to make a second 7y minus 3. So I say, what factor? and I take out of negative 14y plus 6 to give me 7y minus 3. And the answer is a negative 2. If I multiply through here, I'll get my minus 14y plus 6. So now I can finish my factoring by grouping. Uh, since I have a common factor in each of these two terms of 7y minus 3, that I can factor out of each term. So that's 7y minus 3. And then I write down everything I'm left with. I'm left with a y in the first term. That goes right there. And I'm left with a minus 2 in the second term. And that goes here, minus 2. So that's your final answer, 7y minus 3 times y minus 2. And if you want to be sure, you would multiply it all back out to get 7y squared minus 3y minus 14y plus 6. Now the other way to do this problem is to do what I call factoring on the fly. So we look at our a, and our a is 7, and we say what two numbers 
multiply to give me 7. Well, you only have one choice, and that's 1 and 7. That means I'm going to have two binomials that have a 1y and a 7y, and there's no other choice. It has to be 1y and 7y. The next thing I do is I come over and I look at the sign uh, in between b, the b and the c term, and the sign is a positive. So, and the sign before b is a negative. So since I have a negative uh, b and a positive c, I know that I have to have two negatives in my answer, so that becomes a minus and a minus. And again, I have no choice. It has to be minus, minus. And then the last thing I do is I look at the C term. And my C term is 6. And again, I write down all the factors that I can do that multiply together to give me 6. So that's 1 times 6, or that's 2 times 3. And now it's just a matter of guessing. I could put a 1 here and a 6 there. So if I do 1 and 6, and then I want to check and see if I'm right. And the way I check and see if I'm right is I do the inside-outside part of FOIL. So I do the inside, and I do the outside, just those two. And so I do 1 times 7, and that's uh, negative 1 times 7y is negative 7y. And then I do negative 6 times 6 times y, which is minus 6y. And then I add it together. And that's negative 13y. And I check it. And I say, does that match? Is that the same as negative 17y? And it isn't. So I say, oh, well, that's wrong. So then I go ahead and erase. And I try again a new number over here. So the one in, the one here and the 6 here did not work. Uh, if I switch them, if I do a 6 in this spot and a 1 in that spot, I'm going to get 42 right here. So that's not going to work. So I'm going to so the 1 and the 6 just don't work at all. So now I'm going to try the 2 and the 3. So uh, again, it's a guessing game. Um, I want to do 2 and 3. So I can put the 2 here and the 3 here, and I say, OK, let me multiply that out. Negative 2 times 7, that's a negative 14y. Uh, and negative 3 times y, that's minus 3y. And so that equals negative 17y. Now that does match my middle term. That is great, so I draw a big smiley face. And this is my answer y minus 2, 7y minus 3. Now you can see you get the same answer doing both methods, so you use the one that makes the most sense to you. I hope this helped.